I think everybody knows who you are. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, thanks so much for having us on the show. And uh, so I'm, I'm the, I guess, the subject of Sound of Freedom. Uh, I spent 12 years as a special agent, undercover operator for the U.S. government. Ten of those years on the border. You see that there's, a, there's an important scene in Sound of Freedom where a little kid is rescued at the border. True story. Um, which kind of kicks off the rest of the, the narrative, right? Uh, and then, you know, in, in 2012, 2013, I started discovering something. Well, let me go back to 2006. In 2006, the, the laws changed in, in the United States with the passage of something called the Adam Walsh Child Protect Act. What it did was it allowed US agents for the first time to go overseas. Wow. And we could, if we found Americans engaging in sex with kids, we could hold them accountable as if they'd committed that sex crime in the US. So that kind of opened up like international operations. And about that time I went to undercover school and they sent me in. I'd play the role of a pedophile, a, a purveyor of child sex, trafficker, whatever. And, and we'd go in. Um, but what happened though, the US government didn't mean to do this, but they kind of tortured me because, uh, I, you know, here, here's the problem. Child trafficking knows no borders and boundaries, but bureaucracies do. And so if I'm down there and I find a kid, I don't care what nationality, I don't care what anything. It's a kid, a kid's a kid. But the laws in the US needed me to find the American. Wow. And so I'd be like, guys, let me finish the case and then we'll find the Americans later. Nope. That's too creative for a bureaucracy. Come home. Several times this happened. It's breaking my heart. And in 2013, I was actually working two cases. Uh, uh, one in Haiti. Crazy story. This little boy named Gardy Marty, U.S. citizen of Haitian descent. Two years old. The family moves him back to Haiti. He is kidnapped out of the church where his father's the pastor. Oh, my God. Kidnapped, trafficked. I learned about this story. I meet the father. I'm thinking, this is a U.S. citizen. I can, I can go find this kid. He was born in Utah, and I had been transferred to Utah recently at that point. Um, so I'm working this case. I'm told, come home. You, you, there's, this is a Haitian crime. But I promised the father. Wow. I promised the father I would never stop. At the same time, I'm down in Colombia, and this is the part you see in Sound of Freedom, consulting, and I was given permission, if you listen to the film, it's accurate, I was given permission to consult you know, <laughs> and as you see in the film, I, I went beyond that. <laughs> and then, so then they said, hey, where's the American? Where's the leads? I said, I feel it. It's here. Come home. So that was two in 2013. And I called my wife and I was like, what do I do? Like, my heart is breaking. Like, these kids will be rescued. These kids will be rescued. But if I leave, I mean, I'm the bait. I, you know, I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the point on this case. And, um, and, and she, you see in the movie, right? Where, is this okay? I'm just going? Yes. You do yeah, it? Absolutely. absolutely. Right. This is why you're here. <laughs> I just keep... But in the movie, Mira Servino, who plays my wife, Academy Award winning, amazing actress, um, and it's one of my favorite lines in the film because it's so powerful. It's, it's much more powerful in real life. But she says, just quit your job and rescue those kids, right? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it. But that's not what really happened. <laughs> okay, the, Eduardo and the team didn't want me to show the, the true cowardice that... I actually manifested at this time in, in, in late 2013 because it was my idea. I said, well, Catherine, if I, if I, if I come home, you know, uh, it's over. But I keep my job. I have to quit my job to, to do this. I, I talked to, I mean, I was, I was calling the DHS, like, ethics office. Can I do both? Like, no, you can't do both. You can't moonlight. you got to quit, you know, or, or do the case. Um, and she said, and so her line was supposed to be, well, get your butt home because we got six kids and, and yet we have no money. Like we, you know, we have a couple thousand, you know, stocked away, you know, um, stocked away in the bank or something. And, 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 and she didn't say that. <laughs> she didn't say that. She said, could you save the kids if you stayed there? I said, yes. Yes. And she's like, why? It was almost like embarrassing. Like, why are you even asking me this question? Wow. She said, we have a meeting with our maker. We will be dead in 50 years anyway. She, and she said, I don't care if we live in a tent. These are exactly her words. I don't care if we're in a tent because we lose our house. You have to do this. You have to try. And I fought back like a coward. Like, are you kidding me? What about my own kids? I got to take care of my own six kids. Like, they'll be fine. Um, she finally got to the point where she just gave it to me in one line that didn't make it in the movie because, again, it would have manifested my cowardice. Um, but one line that this is verbatim, it ended the debate. It shook me to my core because she's usually very sweet. <laughs> and she said, and this is a quote, I will not let you jeopardize my salvation what? by not doing this. 